Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Today we are gonna go out into the seed starting room and we are gonna get a bunch of seeds started today. I'm gonna give you an update on how the seedlings are going and we need to do some transplanting, we need to do some up potting. I wanna give you an update on the garden and I wanna give you an update on those bean seeds we started as our compost test. I think I know which compost I'm gonna go with and I wanna show you what's going on. It's been quite the morning though just to get to this point. <laughs> It's actually afternoon, it's two o'clock right now. All day, my plan has been to get out there and it was been one of those days, one thing after another after another, and we're finally getting out there. But before we get out there, I need to fill up my water because we need water for just watering plus transplanting and all that. So I'm gonna get this filling. I am going to put into my water container some of this fish fertilizer. This was a recommendation from Nicole from Flower Hill Farms again for her seedlings. It's what she uses. So it's what I bought. I can link it down below. Beware though, it is a little bit stinky. It's an organic fertilizer. I'm going to just get that in there so that mixed up as well. I am so glad we've made it to this point of the day where I can get out there and just get my hands in the dirt, spend time with you, and just get things done that I've been wanting to get done all day. This is my favorite way to water my seedlings is with one of these containers. And I like this one because it has such a big reservoir so I don't have to fill it up as often. Now that the seedlings are getting a little bit bigger, I have to fill it up more. But I'm also gonna fill up two of these half gallon jars because we're going to start some seedlings so I need some water just to dump into our potting mix so that we can moisten that up. We did it friends. We officially made it into the grow room. Huge win for the day. <laughs> this morning has been a little crazy. Now what I want to do first, I think I want to give you an update on how all the seedlings are looking because we've had some serious success out here. I have never grown as healthy looking of a seedlings as I have until this year and I think it was that Vermont compost. I went to go order some more of it and you all, it's sold out on Amazon. So I ordered some through their website. It's gonna take a little bit longer to get here, but that stuff is incredible. So I wanna thank you, Nicole, over at Flower Hill Farms for recommending that Vermont compost because let me show you how beautiful these cauliflowers and cabbages are looking. I have never grown seedlings to look this healthy and this vibrant and this good. This is one thing we're gonna have to, because they look so healthy and vibrant, we're gonna have to do something about today. And I wanna show you how these beans are looking. These are the beans in the compost that I'm testing to decide which compost I wanna purchase in bulk from a local compost supplier so that I can fill my raised beds. We've got A over here and B over here. We went together to do two different suppliers of compost and I read over their soil tests. Let me tell you that took a lot of time to read over and kind of learn and figure out what it all meant. But I've got some interesting results here. Now these seedlings look a little bit leggy and that's my fault. Today is Monday. On Saturday, it was 60 degrees out. I took the day off. I didn't come in this grow room at all. I didn't realize that because we've got these two big windows in here, this room was gonna get really hot. And these little seedlings were going to sprout really quickly. So they sprouted, and I didn't realize they sprouted for about 24 hours. So they got a little bit leggy, but I think that's okay. I'm not looking at this when it comes to whether, how these seeds do. I just wanted to see how they germinated, and I want to see how the plants do once they sprout. So that was my fault that I didn't come out here. The baby and I, we went and walked on the waterfront for two hours. We had some family fun things, and I just didn't get out here and I should have. I didn't realize these were gonna sprout in four days. But one thing I find super interesting when it comes to this soil test is A has three beans that have sprouted and I planted four beans in each one of these cells and there's three in this one, there's three in that one and over here in 
test B, none have sprouted in here and only two have sprouted in here. Now this could be due to the fact that the seeds, but it would be kind of low odds that I just happen to put bad seeds in just this one end in here. So I find this kind of interesting. So we're just gonna let these go and see how they do. We're gonna see how they grow. You can see how they are a little bit leggy, but again, that is my fault that that happened because I didn't get them under grow lights right as soon as they germinated. But I think this soil test is still worth the effort of going through it. So I'm gonna put these back under the grow lights. I need to decide on which soil we're gonna go with in the next few days. And so I'm just gonna let these continue to grow. We are about three weeks behind on our landscape project. At this point, I would have thought we would have already had soil in the beds. And I kind of, when I planted these cabbages and cauliflowers out, that's what I was banking on. But then we got that snow and they weren't able to work for three weeks. So these cauliflowers and cabbages need to be up potted because their roots are starting to grow out the bottom. And I don't want to stress these plants out by having them in these seedling trays and not having enough space. I normally would take these plants at this size and how beautiful they are and I would stick them in the ground, but that's not an option right now. I don't have anywhere to put these. So we are gonna get them up potted so they don't get too stressed being in this small container. So what I have here is some recycled oh, four inch pots. These are just pots that I had purchased starts from over the previous years and I like to keep them. And I'm gonna get these plants up potted. So what we have here, the first one we're gonna do is the 65 day cauliflower. And I have three rows of that. I ordered more trays, but they are not here yet. So we're just gonna work with what we have. Here I have some high quality potting mix. I'm going to take this whole thing out of here just so that I can pop out my cauliflower. You can see how the roots are just starting to come out the end of that. I don't want this whole thing just to be growing out the end. So we're going to put it in this pot so that it has more room to grow. And I'm not gonna stress this little plant out by having it be in too small of a container. So we have one there. And I've got three rows of these. So this is perfect timing for this because these roots have not started becoming root bound in that seedling cell. This would absolutely be the perfect time to get these in the ground. I timed it well with the size of what these plants are, but we're just working with what we have and we're, we're just gonna make it work. And if I need to go through this extra step here to do this, that is no big deal. I wanna try to keep these plants though as happy as possible because these are the prettiest seedlings I have ever started. So if I can get these from seed into the ground, being happy the whole time, I'm gonna consider that a win for me, even if I had to go through a little bit extra effort to make that happen. I know I have three rows of cauliflower, so I took the first three rows of cauliflower here and I'm gonna up pot all of those rows working backwards and then I'll get them labeled on this tray. I am going to label them. I am going to get them from the seed into the ground and knowing what they are the whole time. That is a goal of mine this year. And we're gonna see if we can make it, but I, I'm committed to having that be my goal. So I'm just gonna fill up, you know what I should do to make this faster? I'm just gonna fill up this whole tray worth of pots because I know I'm gonna fill up a whole tray and we will then start transplanting all these. And then I still have five four inch pots that I can fill. I'm, I just folded this over a little bit so I have a tab when it comes to removing it, I'll be able to remove it. And then I'm gonna put my red cabbage over there because the red cabbage looks a lot different instead of having to label every single one of these four inch pots. I know I will have to do that at some point, but if I can try to do a little less labeling I'm gonna be happy with that. 
and I'm still going to put the date that I put these in here. This was on February 22nd that I started these seeds and today is March 20th. I have a couple failures out here that I want to show you and like this is considered a major success for me, but there are a couple failures that I want to show and we'll get to that in just a little bit. Well, you know, I don't know if I want to call them failures. I'm going to call them learning opportunities or a learning experience. I almost learn more. I do learn more, I would say, from my not great attempt or my attempts that don't work as opposed to my attempts that do work, it seems. So here is our red cabbage that I'm going to get in here. The reason I'm doing this is it's pretty obvious the difference between the red cabbage and the cauliflower because the leaves are different. But can you just see how beautiful and dark these stems are? I, I'm telling you, friend, I have never, ever had such beautiful starts before. I'm just kind of... I'm not breaking the roots, but I'm just kind of loosening them. These roots on these red cabbages are a little bit tighter than the cauliflowers were. You can see there, there's a little bit of the root starting to go around that bottom of the pot. So I just want to loosen them just a bit. So they're going to be happy going right into this four inch pot. And I only started one red cabbage. So I know any red cabbage that is in this tray is this red cabbage because it's the only one that I have. So I have five of these cauliflowers over here. This is a different variety than the last one we just potted up and I only have five of these. And I have quite a few green more cabbages in that tray. So I'm gonna mark these and I'm gonna know what's what is between this red, excuse me, between this green cauliflower, I'm gonna put my red cabbage. So I'm gonna mark cauliflower here and then in the middle, and I just broke that leaf, I'm gonna put red cabbage so now I'm gonna put green cabbage and they're gonna be marked between the two with the red cabbage. Second tray, oh no, I gotta label it. I just ripped the red cabbage one and I can just stick, reuse that label. Put it right here. Now it's time to make some room under these grow lights. I It's a little bit of like Tetris around here because my racks are not all the exact same height. And so I have to put the shorter plants on the shorter shelves and the taller plants on the taller shelves. So once I get them figured out where they're gonna go, I, I do wanna water these in really well. Anytime you transplant anything, you wanna make sure you give it a nice good drink so that the plants don't get stressed out too much from the transplant process. I just ran out of trays and I need more trays. So let me go grab what I think is gonna work for this. I've got these lids to totes. These are extra lids that have been in my garage. I think this will work just fine. You could even do soil blocks on this, which I might end up having to do because I have a couple more of them out there. But for Right now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna continue to fill up pots with soil, and I'm gonna use this. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna work. Like I said, I did order more actual seed starting trays, but I am all for using what I have in the moment, and I, I have this, so I'm gonna use this. Look at this too. I should show you this while I have it out. This is our asparagus. Isn't that incredible how well that's looking? I'm gonna call this success. I don't think I'm gonna plant this asparagus in one of the raised beds. I think I'm gonna find a place on my property to put this just to let it live for years and years and years to come. Because before we can actually harvest an asparagus to eat, 
it's going to be a good three years. But you can already see, I mean, you can see how small and spindly these are. You wouldn't get much from an asparagus if you harvested it when it's this little. Each one of the seeds, because I only planted one seed per cell, puts off quite a few shoots. And you can just see how itty bitty teeny tiny <laughs> these cute little asparaguses are. I'm going to order two year old crowns to plant in the raised beds. But this guy is just going to go back up here until I figure out where I'm going to put that. pretty awesome <laughs> I think this is great I can get so many of these four inch pots on here now this right here is broccoli that we are going to up pot that I need to I've got eight of these these are broccoli plants that I started and I bought the seed at Dollar Tree <laughs> this was an experiment to see how these Dollar Tree seeds would work and so far they're looking a look pretty good this one is a little bit yellow but all the rest of them are looking beautiful. So I'm really happy with it. It's a good time we're up potting them because you can see on these broccoli plants too, the roots are just now starting to get a little bit tight around there. And broccoli too, this is another plant that if I had my ground ready to go, I would not be up potting this broccoli. But we are at a stage where this is what we're doing this year and I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to be out here with you, getting my hands in some dirt. We've got a, quite a few seeds we need to start today too, but I wanted to get this done first because I knew this wouldn't take me a very long time, and I thought that if I could get this done, then I could think through the other things that I need to get done. So we got our eight broccoli plants, and now we have two cabbage plants. But I want to do the same thing on this tray where I put something between it where I know that this is my broccoli and this is the three last of these little cabbage plants I have. I'm going to put the cabbage over here. Now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna put in these pots. I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 pots here that I need to find something to put in here. And I'm going to look at my peppers maybe and see if I can put some peppers in here. This tray and this tray are my peppers and I have never had pepper plants look this healthy before. And something super interesting about this tray, I'm gonna pull it out and show you, is we have King of the North pepper. This is a bell pepper that's an heirloom. We have King Arthur F1. This is a hybrid from Johnny Seeds. Then we have Marcon Marconi red bell peppers, or I don't know if it's a bell, but it's a red long pepper. My hybrid bell peppers germinated about a week before the King of the North, and they germinated almost two and a half weeks before the red Marconi peppers. So my King of the North peppers are by far the largest pepper plants that I have in here. And I think because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and take a minute and I'm going to get them potted up into these four inch pots. I probably don't need to do that today on these, but I'm gonna fill this space here with something else. But before I do that, I need to mark what these green plants are because I will forget what I have over here. So I'm going to take, and I'm just going to rip that off and I'm going to reuse this label. This cabbage right here is our golden acre cabbage. I'm going to stick that there. Nope, that's wrong. There's definitely a chicken I think that just laid an egg in our garage. I tried to find her earlier and I couldn't find her. I didn't have the garage door shut, that was not good. I just heard the clucking of, she just ran out. That one just laid an egg somewhere in our garage and now I'm gonna have to find it. I do not have time <laughs> to find that egg right now, but I'm gonna have to do that tonight. 
I'm pretty sure she laid an egg in there. But I got the garage door closed, so we won't be able to, she won't be able to lay any more eggs or any of the other chickens won't be able to get in there and lay some eggs. Now, I almost just labeled this wrong. This is our golden acre cabbage over here, and this is our Dollar Tree broccoli. So, our Dollar Tree broccoli, our golden acre cabbage, and now I'm going to plant my, oh my goodness, friends. The roots on this pepper plant are just stunning. Look how beautiful that is. So green, so beautiful. I think between the compost that we started these seedlings in and fertilizing them, every time they get watered, it's making a huge difference in the health of these plants. One of the absolute most important things I have learned this year when starting seeds indoors that's changed the way my seedlings look is starting my seedlings out in a very nutrient dense medium. A lot of the mediums that you purchase that are specifically designed for seed starting are really light and fluffy so that it doesn't get so it doesn't inhibit the seed germination. There's nothing heavy that's getting in the way of the seed germinating, but a lot of them are very nutrient deficient and so they're fine if you're going to germinate your seeds and then as soon as they germinate you transplant them into something that's nutrient dense but if you're going to keep your seedling in that medium that's very deficient in nutrients it's very difficult to have a very strong seedling because it's needing that nutrients and even though last year i started my seedlings in a less nutrient dense material than i did this year I fertilized them every time I watered them. They look nothing like these ones. These seedlings look beautiful, and I think it's because it's that very nutrient-dense Vermont compost we started these seedlings in. While we're over here, I want to show you one of the failures and successes. I'm going to say overall it's a success because we got three of them. So these are the big cuttings that I took from the previous house. I put them in water, they rooted out, and then I stuck them in some potting soil. These three cuttings look great. This one is starting to bud out right here. That's brand new growth. But one of them shriveled up and died. I'm not sure why this one, it had a leaf on it. It broke off, it shriveled up, it died. I don't know why that one decided to die on me, but I'm really glad that I took four cuttings because out of the four, three are looking fantastic. We have a lot more we need to do out here and I'm just trying to think through what is the best next step to go. I do eventually need to, I'm not gonna thin any of these tomato plants. Some of them, there are two, and this one has three tomato plants per cell. I only need one tomato plant per cell. I'm eventually going to separate those and put them in separate blocks, but I'm not gonna do that today because I'm gonna let them get just a little bit bigger. Over here are cone flowers. These ones are just starting to germinate. We've got some growth on there. I wanna show you something I'm so proud of. This is the dollar, silver dollar eucalyptus, and we have some serious germination in here. With the eucalyptus, I thought that this was very hard to grow. I thought it was something that took a really long time to germinate. This only took like five days to germinate. I was shocked, and so I'm really excited about that. So. This is a win. Our nasturtiums are looking fabulous. We've got some serious growth on these nasturtiums. It's kind of interesting. The cherry rose and the whirly bird, those have all germinated except for two cells on the whirly bird. But the tip top rose, we only have germination really on half of them. And today, three of them germinated out of the four that have germinated and there's eight total. So it's just interesting that these two varieties germinated a whole lot faster than this variety. I think what I want to do now is start condensing some of these trays. This tray right here is another one of those not successes. It is a learning experience, not a failure, a learning opportunity. All of these seedlings here are parsley and they are doing okay. We've got some growth. We've got some growth on our thyme. But our sage and our lavender that we started back on February 28th, or excuse me, February 23rd, and today's March 3rd, so it's almost been a month. Nothing has germinated with the sage, and nothing has germinated with this 
um, what is this called? Um, lavender. And there is mold growing on the top of the lavender and a ton of algae growing on the top of the lavender. Everything else, the tops of the soils are looking really good. It's just this one. So I don't think my lavender on this tray is going to germinate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start transplanting some of this parsley. I wanna condense it because this is taking up a lot of space under my grow light for only those few little plants. So we're gonna condense this parsley along with this tray. We've got some growth on our summer savory and nothing has germinated on the sweet marjoram. Our caraway has germinated and just today, it's been almost a month, we have one tiny little oregano seedling starting. So this, I'm gonna to try to condense this tray with this tray and this tray. This is where we had our cauliflower and our cabbage. And here we have our celery. And this is right here, our snapdragon. So I don't want all this empty space under the grow lights. So it's time to condense. What I think I'm gonna do to condense those four trays into one tray is I am going to get a new seed cell because the one that has the mold on it and stuff, I want to sanitize that before I put any more seedlings on it. So one thing I learned this year is celery takes an exorbitant amount of time to germinate and it needs light to germinate. And I, cauliflower brassicas cauliflower and my cabbage those things take hardly any time to germinate at all so next year what i'm going to do with my celery is i'm not going to put something that takes forever to germinate with something that takes a couple days to germinate i'm going to put my celery in a four inch pot i'm going to sprinkle the seeds on the top and when they get about this big like they are here i'm going to transplant them into something like this so that I'm wasting less time under the grow lights with something like celery. Because some of these are just starting to germinate and so I'm going to try to get these transplanted one per cell in here. What I'm gonna do is take my scissors to help kind of lift out the seedling from the tray because these don't have huge root systems yet. kind of long and then I'm just going to kind of stuff it into here and those actually do have pretty established root system I mean it's pretty it's pretty long a couple other things that I've learned this year is when I'm planting out my different seeds in a tray, say something like this, where there's 52 cells in this one tray, is that I need to make sure I plant varieties of things that have about the same germination rate. Because what have, I've had struggles with is I planted multiple varieties in one of these 52 cell trays, and one of those varieties will germinate in four to five days, and then the other variety, say, will take two weeks to three weeks to germinate, but I've got to move the tray off from the heat mat and under the grow light as soon as the first thing germinates because once something germinates, it needs light and that plant won't survive if it stays on the heat mat for all the rest of the other seeds to germinate. So next year or next time I start seeds, I will plan that out a little bit better and I will put varieties of things that have about the same germination rate in one tray. Another thing that I learned this year, I just learned this, is that celery needs light to germinate. The seeds themselves need light to germinate, and I didn't know that, so I had a bunch of these celeries that I was trying to start on the heat mat with other varieties of things, and then I put them under the grow light, and then they germinated. So what I think I'm going to do different, because celery is hard to germinate, and it they're small, is I think I'm going to take a four inch pot next year. I'm going to sprinkle the celery seeds on top. I'm going to throw that underneath the grow light. I'm going to let them germinate and grow to about the size they are today that I transplanted them. And then I will take them and transplant them into individual cells. And I think I'm going to do that also with my snapdragons and anything where the seeds are super teeny tiny. It'll just be easier to just sprinkle them on a four inch pot, let a bunch of them germinate when they're small, transplant them into individual cells. 
look how much better this looks. I think that these seedlings hopefully are going to thrive a little bit better in here. Now I have one celery, one flower per cell, and one parsley. Over here I did put two parsleys per one of these four inch pots just because I want to conserve a little bit of space. But now we're going to get them watered in and then from now on I'm going to bottom water. I'm not going to water the tops of them. Bottom watering is a lot better in preventing algae and things growing, especially on these smaller things. On the things like the cabbage and cauliflower, because the plants get so big so quick, the plant starts to shade out the soil so they don't have as much of that algae tendency to grow, at least in my experience. And I don't know why, I just learned you could take the spray nozzle off these and bottom watering was difficult for me and I hadn't been doing it because then I have to carry out one of these every time. But then I learned you can just unscrew the bottom of this and I can bottom water just like this, which is really, really easy. I can use my pump gun. I'm gonna top water these a little bit just this first time because I want to get them completely saturated but I am gonna put a little bit of water in the base here so that it can soak up through the bottom as well. This is all learning and just figuring out what works. And just because something I figure out works for me, it might not necessarily work perfect for you because we all have such different conditions we're working with. So that's kind of the fun thing and the stressful thing on gardening is there's just so many factors and it's just, there's so much to learn. But it's kind of fun too, because when you figure out something that does work, it feels like a huge success. In this tray with the asparagus, I'm going to transplant some of the summer savory to condense this tray as well because there's just not enough stuff in this tray to be under the grow lights. I need, I need to condense as much as possible. So these little summer savory plants are each gonna get its own cell and they get to live their rest of their life out indoors, sharing space with the asparagus until it's time to put them outside. And right here I have caraway, and that's the only thing else that's living in this pot. Actually, I have oregano here. These two oregano's just sprouted. I think I'm gonna just plop out this tiny little seedling. Oh my goodness, that's so small. And then I'm gonna stick it right here. And that is oregano. Once I get oregano to grow, I only have to plant it one time and oregano will actually take over. It'll, it almost is obnoxious weed. So I'm gonna have to be careful where I put it. But going through this effort of taking care of this little tiny seedling, I should only have to do one time and then it'll just go crazy. was a lot that was a little stressful for me I don't know why I think it's because I'm I don't have all the equipment that I technically need for how many starts we have I realized I need more four inch pots 
I definitely am going to want to up pot my peppers and my tomatoes. When I moved from the last homestead, I brought all those pots and I have used just now all the four inch pots that I moved. For some reason, I thought I had a tremendous amount of those four inch pots and I just don't. So I just placed an order to get some more four inch pots because these peppers are definitely going to need to be up potted because my goal is to try to have these peppers be as healthy as possible going into this growing season and I would like to try to grow a year's worth of peppers if I can for us. Now the peppers that I up potted right here these are the King Arthur hybrid bell peppers and those ones like I had mentioned they germinated a lot sooner than my King of the North bell peppers and my Marconi peppers. So these I'm not going to up pot for probably a week or so because I can I just don't have the time I don't think to up pot them and I need to order the pots but I think they're going to be okay because their root system is not quite as developed as the King Arthur ones that's why I chose the King Arthur ones because those ones are the biggest pepper plants and they need that space now versus these can stay in these two inch pots for a little bit longer if my beds in the garden were already filled then my cabbages and cauliflower were are, would already be going out there and I wouldn't have had to take up using my four inch pots for these seedlings because they would not be up potted. They would just be so directly into the garden, but that's not the way it worked. I don't have any soil in those boxes yet. So I needed to use my four inch pots to up pot these so that these would stay healthy. <laughs> they wouldn't get root bound before we need to put them out there. Plus I'm, I know I'm gonna need to up pot my tomatoes and so I'm going to need to order more pots. And so this was very stressful for me because I was having to use my brain a lot trying to play Tetris and organize all the seedlings where they go in bigger pots or condensing them into like right here, just into less trays because I'm also running out of grow light space. That's another issue too that I'm running into. So I might be placing another order for some more grow lights. So let me just show you now how everything is doing and what's germinating well, because there are some really exciting stuff that I'm seeing. We already looked at the cone flowers and these tomatoes and the we looked at that shelf, so we're good there. Here we have a tray of tomatoes and this tray of tomatoes was planted out the same day that we planted out these tomatoes. And you can see the germination rate on this tray is so good. We've got nothing growing in these two cells here or that cell there, but everything else has at least one tomato plant and then some of them have two, so I'm gonna to need to go in there and separate them. But our tomatillos have all germinated as well, that's right there, so that looks really good. But for some reason, this tray from here over, these are all tomatoes, we have pretty poor germination. None of the mortgage lifters germinated. We have watermelon, tomato we've got all but one germinated there these two cherry tomatoes from Baker Creek we had very poor germination on these as well we only had three out of ten germinate these are the red center fill cherry tomatoes not one of those germinated we have Dollar Tree tomatoes these are the Dollar Tree cherry tomatoes we got two out of the five to germinate here is our aster flower and we've got three of those that germinated. Here is one of our Rebecca. We've got one that's germinating right now, right there. And then this is our other Rebecca, and we've got two. Oh, there's another one right there that's starting to germinate. These two trays were planted out on March 4th, and today is March 20th. So these tomatoes still could germinate, but we'll just have to give it time to see how well they do. And then right here, are our Cosmos and those are looking really good. Down here we have our stock and these have quite a few of them have germinated but we still have a couple cells that haven't so we're just gonna have to wait and see if these end up more of them germinating or not but I'm happy if that's the amount I get to plant out into the garden. I'm gonna be starting some more seeds here probably tomorrow I don't think I have any more time tonight to start them. I need to start some kale basil, straw flower, zinnias, and poppies. Those are the next things I need to start. And I just don't think I have time because I wanna make soil blocks for them. And soil blocks take me just a little bit of time as opposed to just using the trays. But I've been really happy with the soil blocks. I think that the, I've been able to manage the water a little bit better with 
the soil blocks with having a bigger tray and then the soil blocks I've been watering around the outside and they've been absorbing into the blocks pretty evenly. I've talked about my trays here before that they, it's not the method that doesn't work, it's the actual trays that I have are very poor quality. You can see how the trays does not sit flush into the base of these trays. And so what happens is I have to top water the corners because the bottom of it does not sit down into the tray. And I've just been using these over and over because it's what I have. But I've, I've mentioned a couple times that I ordered some new ones of these and those are just on their way. I'm waiting for them to come. And I don't think I want to start any more seedlings tonight in these ones because they're just a pain to work with. Before we call it a night, let's go outside in the rain. I still have my mud boots on. So while I have my mud boots on, let's go see how far they got done today. It was not so gross out here earlier today. It just got really yucky. But look at that. That is a beautiful sight right there. That is great. Oh, wow. Okay. So there's a lot more that was done today. So the wall is being built up. It doesn't look like it's fully done. By building up this retaining wall, it's going to allow us to have a flat area at the base of the garden where we're going to be able to just have a functional space. Long term, along this flat road area that we're going to have here, I think I want to maybe grow grapes up along what will eventually be a deer fence that runs along this retaining wall here. Here's one of the drainage pipes from the house. And they dug out the new area for the greenhouse. So the greenhouse originally was going to sit at this angle. I didn't like that. So now it's going to come out this way. And they redug that, and that looks a whole lot better. Well, that is super exciting. The garden is coming along, hopefully, in the next, I don't know. I think I would be pushing it to say that by the end of the week this week that there would be soil in those beds. I just don't think that's going to happen. So hopefully next week we have soil in the beds and I'll be able to get some of those plants out of the grow room and into these beds. And hopefully I'll be able to start some peas and carrots soon because I, I could be direct sowing some things as well right now. I think, I don't know, I'd have to look at my schedule, like my planting schedule. I have it all written out. But I just know that we're moving along and this is the first year of many, many years on this garden. So there's no need that if those cabbages grow too big in the grow room and then they don't do super well out here and I end up having to, to pick up a couple cabbage starts, that's okay because this is the first of many, many years on this homestead. So thank you for being here as we we're in the grow room today. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you. If you want to watch more of my videos, I can pop a couple more right here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I need to go inside, start some dinner, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.